What's up, freaks? What are you doing? You're already making weird faces? <laughs> smile! Cheese for the camera! Cheeseburger smile. What's up, freaks? Welcome to episode number one of Breaking the Cycle with these two little freak show co-hosts. We're going to be doing this. We're going to do this every week or just a one-time thing? Probably after today is going to be a disaster, so we're going to say we're never doing that crap again, right? Yeah. What do you think? One, yeah? Disaster. Disaster? What do you think? Keep doing it. So, oh, so you have you, so you don't have very high hopes for this team, this dream team here. <laughs> I'm, I'm throwing 50, 50, 50 coin flip. It's gonna be a disaster because I can see this one ready to cause some freaking. Look at this. Look at that guilty look. <laughs> ready to cause some freaking trouble. Look at you. You probably did some horrible stuff right before we got here, right? You caused so much trouble. You, this little tiny little pea head face, but you cause you're like a, a little monster. So anyway, this is breaking the cycle. Episode number one. This is gonna be freaking awesome. We've been waiting for this all week. We had we had official business meetings on the calendar for this. They would come in my office. We'd sit down. They would screw around, and 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 they called it a business meeting. But we were all prepared, ready to go. Are, are we boring you? You're you're ready to fall asleep over there. Snap out of it. Slap out of it. Who's that leaving comments? Steve Uwa Eckert. I think that's Russian. So the break of the cycle is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree, no matter how bad or screwed up you think your childhood was, so that you could become the type of man that your son would want to become and the type of man your daughter would one day want to marry if you ever let her out of the house by the time she's 40. But we're not, so we don't have to worry about that. 40? Yes. And this is with the freak, Tyson, and the midge, of course, living a no excuses life. That's what this show is all about. What and and why do we start this show? Because we we sit around and, we, and when we're working out together, we work out together pretty much seven days a week. And what do we usually do when we're working out? Like in between, when you're taking your breaks, what do we do? Especially this one. Talk crap. Talk right. Talk about the different things and different topics and different subjects. And, so and sometimes we were drawing stuff on the whiteboard and making fake comments. They make they would make comments of like if they were watching it online, what all the people would be writing about the workout that we're doing, and usually it's pretty some funny stuff that we can't even say half the stuff here with these two the crap that these two talk. So we're talking about breaking the cycle because the problem is, and with the the men that I deal with all across the world and all across the country and all the different coaching programs that we do out here in California, realizing that. Men are grown-ups, but they act like little children. Now, I act like a little children, but a little child half the time, but in a way that it's growing and moving the family forward. Your, your family tree is going in one direction, and you can keep doing it. Listen, your, your mother could be a crackhead, and you can use that as an excuse to be a crackhead yourself, or use that as an excuse to not be a crackhead. You guys even know what a crackhead means? Yeah. Yeah. How the hell do you know what a crackhead means? You freaking tell you. How old are you both? Seven. Then. Why are you looking at me? Look at them. How old are you? Then. Then. How old are you? Seven. So this is what it's all about. What is this? Oh, it's the Russian. The Russian is your number one fan. The only fan watching is the Russian of Breaking the Cycle, episode one. Did you have to put that comment in? Yeah, it's just gonna be all. She'll keep putting comments this whole time, I'm sure. So we're, we're when it, when it comes to. You're a, you're a kid, your 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 childhood, whatever it is. Of course, you have your DNA. Like the midge is just a midge. She has my DNA of being just a bony, skinny with little ch little chicken legs and a little pea head. He's got the DNA of he's just just square, solid, disciplined. Look at those shoulder muscles. <laughs> and that and, and you have to show you have your DNA, but you also have your social heredity, like the way that you were brought up what you think is normal, the way you think you should operate, what the way you think about the, your, your potential and how, what you have to look forward to in future in your life and how, how happy you could be in life. There's going to be those things all day. Look at that. What is this? What do you and she told you to smile. Huh? She said smile in a comment. Huh? Yeah, she wrote smile. So we're going to talk about, we're going to tell some stories, we've got tons of stuff planned and we have already a list of weeks and weeks, really a year's worth of stuff for us to talk about each week and that's what this is all about. So let's start off with Tyson over here, even though you need a haircut boy, this is long hair, look at this, this is long hair. So usually you're bald, why do, why do, you, why do you shave your head? Because you're bald. So what does that mean? I want to be just like you. This poor kid is doomed. 
He wants to be like me. This kid is screwed. This kid is doomed. And I just talked about it last week. So I'm going to talk about it again because they're here. I don't, I don't know if they, they probably didn't even see that episode from last week or from Steve Says from last week. And I said, how I, how I judge progress in life. And if I'm going in the right direction in life and in my day is, so I'm up here in my office. Let's say the kids are at school or they're out somewhere at jujitsu practice and I, there's a day I didn't bring them. When they come in the house and the, the door opens, what do you usually do when you come in the house? Run upstairs. Run upstairs for what? Say hi. They run upstairs to the office to say hi and usually disrupt me. And they, they we have rules if the doors close, what they're supposed to do. What are you supposed to do if the doors close? Not twice. twice. And if you don't pick up, then like this. Don't yeah. Like. So you do. You know the rules. You do a nice little light knock once. If I don't respond, another one. How does this one knock? Daddy, daddy. Yeah, you got to work, work on those rules and those boundaries for you. But the point is, I judge my success on the day on how fast are those footsteps running up the stairs. So I hear those four footsteps going up the stairs. Brrr. If I hear them going, but, 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 I know I'm probably being a freaking deadwood being a loser as a father because they're not too excited i know when i was a kid when i would hear the car come in the driveway of my father there'd be fast footsteps it wouldn't be running towards the door it'd be running away from the door it'd be running a different direction it'd be going hiding pretending i was sleeping and it was only 6 p.m like i was asleep in my room that's what my footsteps would be they'd be faster than yours i was a quick mother sucker i was fast i got fast from running away from the door when i thought my father was home and i got fast from running away from the cops but don't worry about that We'll talk about that in future episodes. <laughs> Nothing that they don't know about. I we we talk about police and getting arrested. We talk about they know about alcohol. They've seen their father one time drinking alcohol. We're, we'll have a whole episode just on alcohol That's with these two little weirdos. We're going to be talking about alcohol. Think about that. In general, if you have any questions, what happens? Stop loading. I'm trying to read the comments or the one camera is way over there, the Instagrams. All right. So you want to be, you're, you, you're bald because you want to be just like me. That's if, why would you want to be just like me? Because you're awesome. Wow. That's the first person ever told me that. Do you remember when I first told you you were awesome? Do you remember what was going on, what we were doing? No. So we were doing the, what's one of your favorite things to do? Play games. And what else? Work out. What else? Shooting. What else? Legos. Legos. You were building a Lego. What are you sitting sideways for? Are you even part of here? Are you even part of this show? You're next. And now this doofball sideways. So you were doing Legos. You did the, the marble spaceship. There was like three. How many pieces is that one? The big marble. Over 3,000. Over 3,000 pieces. You're 10 now. So how old were you when you did that? Five. Five or six. Five or six. And it was for like 16 years and up or something like that. Oh, now the Russian's over here. She's like stalking us on all different platforms. She's probably watching us on MySpace and Tweetergram and Twister Twat or whatever. So you finished that thing and I said, Tyson, you're fucking awesome. And I'll, I might slip the F words here and there. Will you ever say it? Yeah. The F word? Yeah. You'll say it, so you'll say the F word? No. Will you ever say it? Why are you looking at me? Look at them. When Why I'm you, older, maybe. When you're older, well, maybe. You probably will. You're going to be the most, you'll be like a... A foul mouth sailor is what you're gonna be. You're gonna be a drunk, drunken sailor. But you will say it now? No. No. Hell no. Even if you might hear it here and there, you might hear a bad word come from me once every few months, probably. You probably hear a bad word. Why do you give me that look? What is that supposed to mean? What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. That it's. Not What'd you ask me about the project when it comes to bad words? How many times did you say the F word during the project? And what was your guess? At least 10,000. 10,000. That's what you think. <laughs> Probably more. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Oh, so you finished it. I said, Tyson, you are, you're fucking awesome. He did the, this for 16 years and up. I helped him with a couple little like of the mechanical parts to it. And that was it. The Russian is up there posting all kinds of stuff. And so I told him you're freaking awesome. He said, daddy, how did you learn how to do Legos? And I said, I don't know. I never learned how to do Legos. I'm learning here with you. I never did Legos really before any sets like that in my life. He's like, who taught you? I said, no one. I said, you're, you're freaking awesome, Tyce. You did this. You did this yourself. You're five years old and you did a 16 and up Lego with 4,000 pieces, 3,000 pieces by yourself. And you said, daddy, did anyone ever tell you you were awesome? You didn't say effing. You said flipping. Did anyone ever tell you were flipping awesome? And I said, 
you know what? Nope. And that's when I created, that's when I started saying, I never really said it before then. I started saying now every day, that's what I end every video with. I tell a hundred people a day that they are freaking awesome since that moment. And that's what breaking the cycle is. Just because things are going a certain way and you were brought up a certain way and you were taught this is how it should be, doesn't mean that's how it's got to be going forward. You got to change the direction of it. So Miz, what about you? Let's talk about you, you little freak. What, 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 do you do, what do you do different about your shoes? Two different color shoes. Why do you do that? I, um, no one can hear you. You're whispering like a mouse. All day you run around screaming, and now you're on the camera. You're going to be all shy and like a little squeaky mouse. Why do you do two different color shoes? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> so when she was two years old, she'd wear two different color shoes. Or two different shoes. Not even two of the same like, shoes. Like, Not even, there'd be like, she'd have one of the Russians like high heels. Then she'd have like some unicorn slipper or Care Bear slipper on the other foot. So she'd be hobbling and gimping around the house like this because they're like two complete different color shoes. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Then we're time to leave the house and Little Freak Show wouldn't leave the house unless she had two different shoes on. So then I'm trying to, I'm fairly strong, dude. I'm like pulling her, trying to get her out of the house. And this little Hellcat would be wrapped onto the railing, wrapped around for life, like ready to rip the damn house down. And I couldn't get her off the railing unless we put two freaking different color shoes on her. So we, she had to have to, I said, at least let's get, let's, let's get two of the same shoes. You're not hobbling around like this. You're going to have some freaking hip problems when you're freaking older, hobbling around like that. So we did two different color shoes. And since that day, the entire family wears two different color shoes. You wear two different color shoes? Why do you wear two different color shoes? So I could stand out from the group? Stand out from the group and so you can do things what make you happy, live life on your own terms. Like before I leave the house, I'm putting on my one color shoe, the other color shoe. The last thing I'm telling myself is I'm going to live, I'm going to do today what makes me happy. I'm going to live my life, not someone else's life. I'm not going to do what makes the rest of the world happy. I don't give a damn what the rest of the world thinks or does of me. I'm going to live life on my own terms. I'm going to march to the beat of my own drum. I'm going to do whatever the hell makes me happy. That makes sense? Yes. Make sense, Midge? Yeah. So that's where the two different color shoes came from. And then this freak show took it a step further. How do you wear your clothes to school sometimes? Backwards. Why upside you... down. Upside down? No. That's backwards, just... backwards inside out. So upside down is just a whole different level. He doesn't just wear them backwards and inside out. This little weirdo, upside down. Do you know what happens upside down? Your waist would be at your head. The neck would be around your waist. You'd be like this. And the top would be all drooping out if you had it upside down. Your pants upside down too? How do you get your legs in there? So you have your legs in there with the crotch and the belt buckle down there. And you're walking around like a freaking prisoner. I want to see you wear it upside down now. I want to see your upside down clothes. So we moved from, Cal or from New York to California. And the first day of school, you wore your clothes. How'd you wear your clothes the first day of school? Backwards. And what would the teacher tell you? Why are you wearing your clothes backwards? And didn't she even ask you if she, if you're like, oh, I, I could fix it for you, sweetie, or something like that? And she yes. say like, she'll fix it for you? First of all, what's this creepy ass teacher trying to do, like stripping little kids and taking their clothes off in the middle of the day? That's just some creepy shit. Don't you think so? So, and, and what did you tell her? Be deaf to malicious gossip. <laughs> you're a weirdo. There's just something wrong with you. Be deaf to malicious gossip because Little Freak Show saw me reading Marcus Aurelius. Ancient Stoic philosophy from over 2,000 years ago. And in, in the beginning, one of the quotes in the beginning, he says, be deaf to malicious gossip. Like that's how he deals with the negativity in the world. And this is a dude in, in a robe and sandals from over 2,000 years ago, teaching us about personal development, teaching this little freak show how to deal with having a shirt inside out and backwards because the teacher told him that he's going to, that they're going to make fun of him. He just moved there. It's a new school. He came from out of town. He's already weird enough because he's bald and crazy and a New Yorker and all this other stuff here in California and all the people are there smoking weed. All the kids are high. They're probably the kids even in, in, in California schools are even high because everyone smokes weed out here. <laughs> but but he's telling his teacher, be deaf to the malicious gossip. And what did she, she say when you told her that? She, she, she didn't say anything. What'd she do? Walk away. She just walked away. I remember you told me she was looking down at you and she's like looking down. Oh, but sweetie, they're going to make fun of you. Want me to fix it for you? Little creeper wants to go fix the shirt. And he said, no, Marcus Aurelius says, be deaf to malicious gossip. And she just looked at him. She was looking down. He said that. She stood up and made like these odd wise. How he showed, told me the first day it happened. This is now a couple years ago. 
And she just kind of nodded her head and walked away. She had no, she didn't know what to say. She wanted no freaking part of it. So, Midge, let's talk about you at school. What's it like at school? What what are you what did you tell me about the boys at school? Every boy screams like a girl. I can't hear you. Every you boy, whisper like a mouse. Every boy screams like a girl, including Tyson. Ooh. <laughs> she promised she wasn't gonna say it on camera and she said including Tyson. That's messed up. I don't scream like a girl. I've heard it. I've heard it, sucker. I've heard it around this damn house. When she walks around and she punches you in the stomach and you scream like a girl. Or I'm chasing you when you piss me off. I hear you screaming like a damn girl. So scream like a girl. What? Did, so so what? What were you saying about? How did that even come up? I don't even remember. I don't know. I don't know. All they all scream like a girl. So when you get older, what were you saying about the? What is all that stuff that you see the Russian put on? Goop and dresses and what do you makeup call it? and stuff. Goop. Yeah. You call it goop, like all the lotion and stuff. You call it yeah. goop. Are you gonna wear goop? When you're older, put no. goop all over you, like all that slippery, slimy stuff all over you know, all over your face and all that stuff. How about all the makeups and the lipsticks and all that stuff? No, no, not at all. Why not? Nope. That's also a type of goop. It's a goop. Why not? Why aren't you gonna wear it? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I just. But you'll definitely wear dresses and and all that other stuff, right? Hell no. What? Can't say stuff like that on live on camera. You said hell no. Uh -oh. What about your hair? You like to put your hair up nice and neat and, and it slicked back, right? Like a bun and a ponytail and stuff, right? No. no. What about when you go to gymnastics? No. Jiu-jitsu? No. So you don't put your hair. You know in jiu-jitsu you're supposed to have like your hair like this, like all tied up tight. Look at you. Look at a whole different person. You, you know, oh. Wait, hold on. Let's just see it. You know you're supposed to look at, look at like a whole different human. Look at that. That's Ow. how you're supposed to be. But, but you like it like this, right? Like all crazy and wild, like freaking Tarzan girl of the jungle. Tarzan right? girl? You like to be a freak Tarzan show. Tarzan girl. All right, so let's talk about the monthly challenges that we set. Tyson and I started a challenge. We did the San Diego bike ride. Remember that? Oh, yeah. How, how far did we ride? 121 miles. 121 miles. Where are you going? She said she, I love the goop. I don't. I hate it. And that's she not how you spell goop. goop. Goop would not be G U P E. It's goop. G U U. G O O P. Midge is tough. B O O G O O P, if anything. She wrote Midge is tough. Well, are you tough? Well, I am, but she wrote Midge is tough. Like, out of nowhere. She didn't write anybody else tough. Anybody else tough. So we drove our bikes from Orange County down to San Diego. It was over 120 miles. We had to wake up. What time did we wake up to go there? 2 a.m. So we woke up at 2 a.m. to go ride there. It took us like 14 hours to do it. And do you remember when we got to a certain point right by the Marine Corps base in near San Diego? And what, where was, what was the shortcut? The highway. And you remember what happened at the highway? There was a sign that said what? Do you remember? It said no, no pedestrians allowed on the highway. So what was I trying to tell you that we should do? Go. No. No, Hell turn no. back. Turn back. I was telling like you I found... four miles. No, more than that. Four miles just to get back to the main road. I said I, I found something on Google Maps that would have gotten us around the highway. It would have been an extra like 21 miles total. We had to backtrack the four that we already did just to go a different route around the highway. And then how long did we have to stay on the highway for First it was two miles, and then we took a break, then another six. Well, because you had to get off at the exit yeah. to go around, because you couldn't get off the entrance. You had to get off at the parking thing, parking spot, and then go on for another six. I think it was a total of like nine miles. On I-5 in San Diego, which is a freaking full like five, six lane highway with monster trucks, like 18 wheelers going by. I'm trying to talk this kid out of it. Saying, I don't want to, I'm, I'm telling him, no, it's dangerous. We shouldn't go. Look, it says no pedestrians. But when they say no pedestrians, they mean not on foot. If you're on a bike, you're not considered a pedestrian. What's Whatever pedestrian? sense that makes. I don't know, a human on feet. I don't know. <laughs> human on feet walking on the highway. So we're driving on the shoulder of the freaking highway. I'm scared to death. This little freak show wants to do it because he doesn't want to ride 21 extra miles to go loop all the way around. So we go on the highway. And then we finished the, the bike ride, 120-something miles in San Diego. We drive back home. Do you remember what we did the next morning? You had off of school on a Monday. Yeah, we did lifting at the gym. Yeah, we went to the gym to go lifting after doing all that. We didn't even recover. You didn't even need to recover, right? No. And you had, you had a real high-tech bike, right? Like one of the street bikes that do all the work no, for you, no. those little tiny tires. What would you have? 
like a BMX, I guess. You know, Walmart special is what you had. Oh, yeah, Walmart special. The only training we did was ride a couple of times out on our own. And then the only maintenance we did in our bike to get our bikes prepared was spray, we sprayed gun oil on the, on the chain. That was it. That was the length of our training and preparation. And then this little freak show tapes cheese doodles to his backpack because he couldn't fit enough snacks in his backpack because it had all this water because we had to carry. We had like a 20, he had like probably a 20 pound pack. Mine was probably like 35 or 40 pounds that we had to ride with because we had to take all of our shit with us because we were by ourselves out there in the middle of the night. And he didn't have enough space because we had to put so much water that he taped, scotch taped, not even like duct tape. He scotch taped a bag of these like organic cheese doodles to the back of his pack. And at like mile, what mile did you eat those? I remember it was like after the highway, the two miles I ate them. That was at like mile 70, 70 something. Seventy-two. You took them off there. You had them. So you had them taped onto your backpack. Cheese doodles, riding on the highway for seventy-two miles. For seventy-two miles, I'm gonna flick your toes every time you kick that thing, little troublemaker. All right. So the monthly challenges we got back, and it, how, how hard was that that bike ride? It was hard, but the next day. I didn't feel the soreness that I thought I would feel. And then, so what did we do? What did we say? Like, we got to come up with harder shit. So what we did that night, the next day after, we realized this, this wasn't even that hard. We needed to create challenges. Hard shit that we were going to do, monthly challenges. So we started doing, what was the first monthly challenge we did, Mitch? 24 hours of push-ups. And how many did you do? 1,000. How many did you do in the 24 hours, though? 99 or 98. What? Huh? 98 or 99. 98 or 99? Yeah. Nine, you only did oh, 99? No, 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 no. 998 or 900. 999. Literally, at the timer, when it went off for 24 hours, she was at 999, then the timer beeped, and then she did 1,000. So in 24 hours and a, a billionth of a second, she did 1,000 push-ups. Freaking crazy. Good job, Mitch. How many did you do in the 24-hour push-up challenge? 2,124. 2,124. And we're talking real push-ups. Not like the YouTube push-ups where you go halfway down. Not the nut-ups. Not the gut-ups where you're just banging your stomach or your nuts on the floor. We're talking real push-ups. Your chest touching the floor. Your feet together touching. Heel to heel, toe to toe. All the way down. That's what we did one month. And we stayed up for 24 hours straight to see how many push-ups we could do. What was, what was the next one we did, Tyson? Bench press a whale. Wrong. Oh no, 24 hour bike ride. 24 hour bike ride, where we just saw how far, how, how many miles we could get on a bike in 24 hours. What was your longest bike ride? My longest bike ride was 54 miles. No, 54 56. Miles? 56? Yeah, 56. 56. And what's your longest? How many did you get in 24 hours? I got 134. 134, so we didn't plan that out too well, but still 134 miles within 24 hours Literally not even sleeping. And then, so once we did this, we started coming up with a whole huge list of other challenges that we wanted to do. And what was the next one you came up with, Ms. You, you thought of, or whoever came up with it? No, I don't Bench press a whale. What is it? How do you, how do you bench press a whale? How are you going to bench press a whale? You just Google or whatever how much a whale weighs and then uh, weigh that. Well, not weigh it, but bench press that much. Except we didn't just bench press. So we did a 24-hour yeah. weightlifting challenge. See how much weight we could lift in a 24-hour period. So if you did 10 pounds for 10 reps of, say, a bicep curl, that'd be how much? 200. 10 pounds total or each arm? 10 pounds, 10 reps. 100. Oh, you're saying if there's a dumbbell on each hand. Yeah. Got it. You're thinking ahead. So you were. You, if you thought 10 times 10 was 200... We were going to cut this damn video off and we were going to do like mathematical equations till midnight. If you thought that. So you added it up and how much weight, what did you end up getting? How much weight did you get? I forgot. I think like... You got like 20,000 20, or something? No, 1,000. More than 1,000. No. You were like twenty or fifty thousand or something. Or no, 40, tw no, twenty-five. I think over twenty-five thousand. I think. What was yeah. your number? My book is actually in my room. You don't remember? It was like a hundred and forty-five thousand. Hundred forty-five thousand. Hundred and forty-five thousand pounds lifted 
in 24 hours with no sleep, just staying up the whole night. I slept three hours. You slept three hours? Sucker, I didn't. So then a few more of these challenges that we have are next is, well, we, we don't have them just throughout the year. We have is how many miles can we on foot walk or run in 24 hours? What were some of the, what were some of the other ones we thought of? Hike Mount Whitney, how many squat thrusts you can do in 24 hours. So 24 hour squat thrust challenge. Meditate for six hours straight. Or, or maybe we should meditate for 24 hours straight. No, six no hours. That's, how, that's how you die. You die from meditating six hours straight? Well, who says? If you just you sit Google there. It? Yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that for punch two a minutes. shark. Oh yeah, punch it. So explain that one. Who who who, who came up with punch a shark? So how the hell is that a challenge? All you gotta do is go to like to the fish store, find a little shark like this big, and 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 what? You're gonna punch it? How is that a challenge? How do you no. make punch a shark a challenge? Punch a shark is boxing for twenty four hours, and I also created wrestle bear. We tried that out at the zoo, but it didn't work. Didn't work out for us. So what are we going to do for Wrestle Bear? Jiu-Jitsu for 24 hours. 24 hours of Jiu-Jitsu. And then, of course, they came up with a, a, an additional challenge. This one is going to be... Reward. What is it? Play video games for 24 hours straight. So How many play, kills we can get? I think that we will die. 24 hours straight of video games? You got to be crazy. 24 hours straight of video games. The longest I think I ever played. But you can't do straight. It's just like the push up yeah. challenge. Like, say you would do a, a, a mission, then I would do a mission, but you're all there and then taking turns. Or how does it work? Are you going to just be sitting there? For no. Time? No. Are you going to eat? I know. Don't you have to eat? Yes. All right. Then we also, other challenges that some of them aren't in 24 hours, but one of them was just how many miles can we get on foot, whether it's walking, running for 24 hours. What else did we come up with? Bear crawl one mile. Bear crawl for a mile. Then we also came up with jump, jump rope one, one mile. That's and I think the gorgeous. next one we're probably going to do is one of these. Is going to be either a 24-hour boot camp class, a 24-hour boxing class, or a 24-hour hike. I think that's going to be one of our next ones for the summer. Like the boot camp class, say, we'll do a 45-minute boot camp class, 15 minutes of stretching, recovering, another 45-minute class. Like literally 24 classes 45 minutes each or maybe also i was thinking of doing it in intervals like 45 minute class 15 minute break then a 30 minute class 30 minute break back to 45 15 because i get we can you really do 24 hours straight of boot camp no that's how you die that one you could die i thought you could you said that for everyone you could die yeah i bet you 24 hours of sleep and you wouldn't have a problem with that one would you who wants to do that challenge no I don't, yeah, this one. I you do it every night almost. Yeah, today you, you go to sleep. Like Twelve. You go to sleep at before everyone, and look at this, and you're ready to go to sleep now, and then you wake up after everyone. But we stayed up last night to like one thirty. Doing important work, I'm sure. <laughs> important work, I'm sure. Also, twenty four hour hike. We're gonna do. We're gonna pick a hike, probably the uh, hike we use for the project, and we're just gonna. It's about a three and a half mile hike with hills and stuff. We're going to hike it, come down, turn around, just keep hiking it as many times as we can get through in 24 hours. We just have a base station down by the truck in the parking lot. We just stay there for 24 hours straight and we have all of our food and stuff down at the bottom, water, and we just keep hiking. So That one you can't sleep. Why not? Like, who's going to sleep gonna, at? You think this one's not going to sleep? She's going to sleep in the car probably. Yeah. Or you're going to have to carry her. Someone will sit out for a lap and would have to stay there. I ain't ca carrying her. For the hike in the middle of the night after hiking 100 miles. So which one do you guys want to do next? 24-hour boot camp, 24-hour boxing, 24-hour hike. We can get one of those. 24-hour hike. 24-hour hike. 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 I guess the next one's going to be a 24-hour hike coming up soon. We'll do And we usually do them for fundraisers where the 24-hour push-up challenge, we, we, what did we, how much money did we make for that one? Four, over 4000 for fundraising. Big, over, big over, brothers and big sisters. Big brothers, big sisters, over 4000 dollars in a 24-hour period that we got for Big Brothers Big Sisters. So we usually do them as fundraisers. So I guess it's going to be 24-hour hike unless for some reason logistically it doesn't work out. Then we'll have to do one of the other ones because those, because the boot camp and the boxing we could do at home. The hike, we're literally at the field for the whole day, 24 hours. At least boot camp and boxing, you, you're at home and... But you just bought that fridge thingy. We have the portable fridge. We have solar panels we could take, solar generators, all that stuff. So it'd be almost like a survival day. We could do a 24-hour survival day. I could dump no, you twelve like in the week. woods. I could dump you twelve in the woods and see how you survive for a week. Without anything? Yeah. 
Let's make a stick bed and a stick house. I guess from Minecraft you can learn a little. You better not be thinking Minecraft. What are you going to do with your... All you got to do is kill three sheep and, you know, just and jump down a tree. And that gives you a bed? Mm hmm So you're just going to, out in the woods, you're just going to find three sheep just wandering around the jungle. This ain't the damn Minecraft. <laughs> what about you? What are you going to make out there? I'm probably first going to... She's probably going to try to find a horse. How are you going to try to find a horse? You think you're just going to run into these random things out into the middle of the woods? No, yeah. I'm... I'm probably going to find some sticks and then make a little house, have some leaves and sticks, and then start trying to find some food. Got it. And Tyson is just thinking off Minecraft. All right, so anyway, this is the type of stuff that we do as a freak family. These are the type of things we do to break the cycle, because I'll tell you what, I never did any of this stuff with my parents or my father as a kid. You guys know I went on one vacation when I was a kid? One vacation to the Jersey Shore. For one day. You got 15 minutes each. Five minutes each. Six oh, kids. Five, five kids because my brother was in the Marines. Five minutes each on the beach. Anyway, that could be, we could talk about fun. travel and vacation right? on another, on another. Did you have to share a popsicle or something? Yeah, ice cream cone. Exactly. So that's what it's all about. Creating these experiences. So ask yourself, in your family, as if you're a, you're a parent, what have, you, what have you done in the last week that you're going to remember? Or in the last month that your kids are going to remember 10 years from now? Do you think I remember that ride to San Diego 10 years from now? Yeah, we will remember that for a lifetime. Do you think you remember the 24 hour push up challenge 10 years from yes. now? Weightlifting challenge? Yes. Yes. 24 hour bike ride? Yes. yes. Think about that. If you're not creating experiences for your kids that they're going to remember 10 years from now, and even just setting in a lifetime, what the hell are you doing? Like, this is the kind of stuff. That's why we wanted to start with this about creating experiences. Ours just happen to be sick, demented, a tough challenge that we do because that's just what we like to do. But if you're not creating experience for your kids, like we just went to Costa Rica. Before that, you freaks went to Poland. Are you going to remember Costa Rica in the next, in a year or two? Yes. yes. So we'll, do, we'll talk about travel and vacation and stuff on another episode because we got to wrap this one up because this has been a while already that we've been on here. So this one's ready to go to sleep, aren't you? Smile. All right. So we're going to wrap this up. This is episode number one of Breaking the Cycle. This is our freak family, how we do things to break the curses of the family tree to change the entire trajectory of your family to become the type of man that one day your bald little crazy son wants to become or become the type of man that one day your daughter would want to marry if you ever let her out of the house, which we're not. All right, we got to get rolling because we got some other stuff to do and we got to go eat some food and go. What else we got to do today? I'm gonna you got your date night. Out. You're going to you do you have what? I'm going to finish my workout. Oh, you got to finish your workout. On our treadmill. Today, we are going to do something together. You have a date with mommy, and we're also going to our friend's house. Awesome. All right, so we got to wrap this up. We still got a lot of stuff to do. I still have a couple meetings to get to. Before that, we got to roll. In case no one told you yet, today, today you, you are, are freaking awesome. awesome. No and gonna, excuses. No, well, you, got, you two got to say it your way, not my way. No! got a roll we will talk to you later and see you next week or in the projects maybe not next week but we will see you next time on breaking the cycle you are freaking awesome no excuses